How's that? There we go. It helps if you actually turn it on. So this is a day that we didn't want to see come. But it's here, and we thank, we are we're thankful for the life of Harrison Kimbrell, of how God used him in all of our lives. Let's open our, our service. Blessed be the God and Father of, of our Lord Jesus Christ, the source of all mercy and the God of all consolation. He comforts their sorrows, and with the consolation we ourselves have received from God. Thanks be to God. Let us rise. Find for 
victory. Lift high the cross, the love of Christ proclaim to all the world adore his sacred name. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In holy baptism, Harrison W. Kimbrell was clothed with the robe of Christ's righteousness that covered all of his sins. St. Paul says, Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized in the Christ, Jesus Christ, were baptized also into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death in order that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God of grace and mercy, we give thanks for your loving kindness shown to Harrison and to all your servants who, having finished their course in faith, now rest from their labors. Grant that we also may be faithful unto death and receive the crown of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. (laughs) Is here. The Old Testament reading is from the book of Genesis, chapter 15, beginning at the first verse. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Fear not, Abram, I am your shield. Your reward shall be very great. But Abram said, O Lord God, what will you give me? For I continue childless, and the heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, Behold, you have given me no offspring, and a member of my household will be my heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him, This man shall not be your heir, your very own son shall be your heir. And he brought him outside and said, Look toward heaven and number the stars, if you are able to number them. Then he said to him, so shall your offspring be. And he believed the Lord, and he counted it to him as righteousness. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Join me in Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his namesake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The epistle reading is from the book of Ephesians, chapter 5, beginning at the first verse. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children, and walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. 
But sexual immorality and all impurity or covetousness must not even be named among you, as is proper among saints. Let there be no filthiness, nor foolish talk, nor crude joking, which are out of place. But instead, let there be thanksgiving. For you may be sure of this, that everyone who is sexually immoral or impure, or who is covetous, that is, an idolater, has no inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not associate with them. For at one time you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 22nd chapter. Teacher, which is the great commandment in the law? And he said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourselves. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ.
Grace, peace, and mercy from God our Father in Christ Jesus our Lord and Savior. Harrison, Kim, Kimbo, my Lord probably some other I remember seeing some other uh, names he was called, but probably mostly Kim and Harrison. Born in Syracuse, New York. You know, graduating the Citadel in 1954 as a, where he was commissioned as a lieutenant in the U.S. Marine Corps. Rising to the rank, rank of lieutenant colonel. He served as an infantry and aviation officer. He served in the Dominican in 1965. And was ordered, awarded decoration for combat valor 1968 through 69 he participated in combat actions with the first and third marine divisions in Vietnam and again receiving combat valor decorations for infantry leadership under hostile fire And then, and then he retired in 74, but he wasn't done. <laughs> he was one of the original founders of the Trident Academy in Charleston, South Carolina. A school for dyslexic students. And then in 1979, going to Atlanta, Brandon Hall... where he became the president of a boarding school for bright, underachieving students. Get the idea? Harrison, Kim, as I I would always call him, he was there to serve. He served our country. And even after he left the Marines, well, I don't think he ever left the Marines. Let's let's be, let's be. I think once you're in for that long, you never leave. But he continued to serve in civilian life. And he continued to serve here. Kim was a man of faith. He wasn't a Bible thumper. He wasn't one of those that's going to stand on the street corner and start yelling about Jesus. It's not really what we do as Lutherans. (laughs) But he lived out his faith. You know, it's like the text that Abraham of Abraham in Genesis. And he believed the Lord and he counted it to him as righteousness. Harrison had that kind of faith. And you look at the Ephesians text and some people are going to wonder, why in the world did you pick that? Well, I didn't really pick it. I found that in some documents from his church in Charleston. In one of my last conversations with Harrison, he said, I haven't been the person I should have been. I should have done better. I should have done better. That's all of us. 
all of us. And St. Paul writing this, for us, it's yes, we can all do better. We walk in love. And yeah, sometimes it doesn't look so good. You know, I know, I know some of the things he wish he was been able to spend more time with his family. Because when you're in the military, when you're career, you're not there. You're gone a lot. But I thank God that when Joyce and Harrison moved back to, to, moved to Florida, he could be closer to you guys. And you guys could get closer. Harrison knew. He knew he was not perfect. He knew it was only by the grace of God that he was forgiven. But he knew that. Sorry, I can't, I can't, I can't men mention Kim without Joyce. <laughs> but they both knew that. They both treasured the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, that gift he gives us to sustain us in the faith. Because life happens, and right now the world's kind of crazy, so we know it gets a little blurry. But that faith he, he had, I can reassure you because I heard it. I heard the very words out of his mouth. Now Harrison was a gentleman. Anybody that knew Harrison knew he was a gentleman. So in that Ephesian text, yeah, you can't go down that road. Because that wasn't him. He was an honorable man and a gentleman. That's how one of our shut-ins described him. The very first words out of their mouth was, he was a gentleman. They could not remember his name, but they knew he was a gentleman. That's who he was. That's who he was. So that grace... That peace, that mercy, Harrison showed that to others. He had that mercy for others. Why else would he go on to the Trident Academy? Why else Brandon Hall? for those that were disadvantaged. But he also knew that Christ had grace and had mercy for him. And that's what gave him peace because he knew that. And that's what gives us peace here and now. It's about the only thing we can hang on to. Because he will be missed. You know, we'll, we'll, always, we'll always remember him. Always. We'll always have the memories. You know, from the board, and there's another one in the back. Always those memories. But one day... Jesus will come back. He will come back. And in the Old Testament, and he believed the Lord. Abraham believed God. And he counted it to him as righteousness. It's not. He believed. He had faith. 
So all the dying of faith will be together once again when Jesus comes again. So find peace with that. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us rise for the Apostles' Creed. God has made us his people through our baptism into Christ. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and a life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray to the Lord, our God and Father, who raised Jesus from the dead. Almighty God, you have knit your chosen people together into one communion in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Give to your whole church in heaven and on earth your light and peace. Lord, in your mercy, Grant that all who have been baptized in the Christ's death and resurrection may die to sin and rise to newness of life, and so pass with him through the gate of death and the grave to our joyful resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, grant that all who have been nourished by the holy body and blood of, our, of your Son may be raised to immortality and incorruption, to be seated with him at your heavenly banquet. Lord, in your mercy, give to the family of Colonel Harrison W. Kimbrell and to all who mourn comfort in their grief and assure confidence in your loving care that casting all their sorrows on you, they may know the consolation of your love. Lord, in your mercy, give courage and faith to the bereaved, that within the communion of your church, they may have strength to meet the days ahead in the assurance in the holy and certain hope, and in the joyful expectation of eternal life with those they love who have departed in the faith. Lord, in your mercy, help us, we pray, in the midst of things we cannot understand, to believe and find comfort in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Lord, in your mercy, receive our thanks for Colonel Harrison W. Kimbrell and for all the blessings you bestowed on him in this earthly life. Bring us at last to our heavenly home that with him we may see you face to face in the joys of paradise. Lord, in your mercy. O oh God of all grace, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to bring life and immortality to light. You get, we give you thanks that by his death he destroyed the power of death, and by his resurrection he opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Strengthen us in the confidence that because he lives we shall live also. And neither death nor life nor things present nor things to come will be able to separate us from your love, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray, our Father, who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Lord, now let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. He who believes in me will live, even though he dies, and whoever lives and believes in me will never die. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord God, our shepherd, you gather the lambs of your flock into the arms of your mercy and bring them home. Comfort us with the certain hope of the resurrection to everlasting life and a joyful reunion with those we love who have died in the faith. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. May God the Father who has created this body and God the Son who by his blood has redeemed this body. May God the Holy Spirit who by the holy baptism sanctified this body to be his temple. Keep these remains to the day of the resurrection of all flesh. Amen. Almighty God, by the death of your son, Jesus Christ, you destroyed death. By his rest in the tomb, you sanctified the graves of your saints. And by his bodily resurrection, you brought life and immortality to light, so that all who die in him abide in peace and hope. Receive our thanks for the victory over death and the grave that he won for us. Keep us in everlasting communion with all who wait for him on earth and with all in heaven who are with him. For he is the resurrection and the life, even Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious on you upon you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Now have you remain standing for the closing hymn.
The following is a reflection written by Harrison Walden Kimbrell Jr. Kimbo. It was to be read by Seda, uh, who was unable to attend, so the family asked me to read it. Reflection by Harrison Walden Kimbrell Jr. Greetings from Indonesia, and thank you for attending this service. I am the elder son, Ken, or Kimbo, of my dad, the colonel. I join my dear brother, Robert, and his wife, Carolyn, in sharing grief while celebrating life as I also offer them my heartfelt thanks for their care, support, and love. I am, certain, I'm, I am certainly with you all in spirit. I am saddened that I am unable to attend today's memorial service and am planning to attend my parents' burial service later this year. Larger than life. In a recent tribute, this is how a relative described my dad. Many called my father the colonel, a telling title of both love and regard. I had the special place of calling him dad, a caring name also of both love and regard. My dad, the colonel, really was larger than life. Through my eyes as a child and as an adult, I hold many vivid memories of dad with trips to the lake, the beach, and the mountains. Other times together included bonding outings to the demolition derbies, minor league baseball games, and Citadel football games, as well as to NWA wrestling matches preceded by a trip to Nebraska's, our favorite Italian restaurant. When I was in the seventh and eighth grades, my dad and I had a special morning ritual. He would drive me to school on his way to work, and we listened to everything from sports talk radio to Johnny Cash. One morning, much to my surprise, dad asked me what I thought of slide guitar, then proceeded to talk to me about Dwayne Allman who was then perhaps the most popular band for people of my age. To this day, I remember this and am still amazed by it. I truly miss those 30-minute rides to school and cherish the memories. Although Dad was a busy man, he always made the time to create memories, often just by showing up. To the 14-year-old me, all these times were special, the stuff of life usually found only in books or in the movies. These memories remain unmatched for me and for Robert. As many of you know, Dad was a voracious reader. He got me to read Deliverance and The Godfather by promising to take me to see these movies after I read the books. A movie with Dad for reading books. I was hooked. My love of reading is still alive and well, and I credit him with planting the seeds. Most purposefully, the Colonel taught valuable life lessons and led by example. I can still hear him say that teachers need to be fair, firm, and friendly, but not familiar, and that a reputation is difficult to earn, but very easy to destroy. My dad's reputation as larger than life was rightly earned, and his legacy lives on. Dad, I love you and miss you so much, as do your grandchildren, Aaron and Lucian. You were an amazing father, Thank you for everything. And to my loving friends and family, I remain with you in spirit and hope to see you soon. In love, Ken and Semper Fidelis, Colonel Kimbrell. The 1979 arrival of Colonel Kimbrell in Atlanta, Georgia from Trident Academy in Mount Pleasant, South Carolina, marked the beginning of his 15 years at Brandon Hall School. The school had already been in existence for 20 years, but it was Colonel Kimbrell who led Brandon Hall from an unrecognized, small, and struggling institution to a position of prominence in American education. In 1979, the field of specific language-based learning disabilities in children was just coming to be understood. But Colonel was already an early leader 
in organizing and directing seminars on learning disabilities in places like the Medical College of South Carolina. He was already a member of the fledgling Orton Society, which later became the International Dyslexia Association. And it was his understanding of students with learning disabilities and the unique one-on-one -on -one teaching available at Brandon Hall School that inspired Colonel's vision of an academic ladder that would allow students to begin their acad academic journey again and flourish. Brandon Hall was the only independent co-ed college prepar preparatory day and boarding school serving grades six through 12 in Atlanta, but no one knew it was there. So Colonel's first appointment was executive vice president of the school and that afforded him the opportunity to size up what, or better yet, what was not going on there, and then to devise his own strategic plan to put Brandon Hall School on the map. As early as 1981, there were three special education schools in Atlanta, the Skank School, Brandon Hall, and Gables Academy. And these three schools and their headmasters joined forces to see to it that the Georgia Association of Private Schools for Exceptional Children received status as a nonprofit organization. This single move gave the organization a common voice for parents to find and choose quality programs for their special needs children and it provided a forum where members of schools could share information relating to the educational needs of Georgia's exceptional children. GAPSAC, as it was referred, the member schools became affiliates with that one move, became affiliates on the local, state, and national level with the Atlanta Association of Independent Schools, the Council of American Private Education, the Georgia Private Education Council, the Georgia Independent School Association, the Southern Association of Independent Schools, the National Association of Independent Schools, and the National Association of Private Schools for Exceptional Children. By 1982, Colonel Kimbrell was appointed president of Brandon Hall and immediately began implementing implementing his strategy. His 1982 report to the board was really brief and to the point, and I quote, there is much to be done as we embark on the reorganization and restructuring of Brandon Hall. Our goal is to build this school into the premier institution in the country for underachieving students, implementation of a model academic program development of a distinguished staff and faculty, and construction of new first-class facilities. Our students will thrive in an environment of structure, accountability, consistency, and support. Creation of this environment must be our daily objective. By the 1984-85 school year, Brandon Hall was named a blue ribbon school by the Department of Education. And this national rec recognition made the school one of only 65 schools selected out of 6,000 private schools nationwide that provided su superior educational development while demonstrating that the students can achieve at high levels. The blue ribbon schools program is a widely recognized symbol of exemplary teaching and learning. In 1984, Colonel Kimbrell was recognized as one of only two national distinguished principals in the state of Georgia, honoring outstanding principals who ensure that America's children acquire a sound foundation for life learning and achievement. And if that were not enough, also during the 85 school year, 
a new academic and gymnasium building were completed on campus. It was now that Brandon Hall started looking like a real school with a sports program, student lockers, a stage, science labs, academic and art classrooms, a bookstore, offices, and a boardroom, and even a space for academic technology. Throughout these years, the academic ladder continued to shape, take shape, affording bright yet underachieving students to move seamlessly from one-on-one -on -one tutorial classes to small group classes as remediation through a multi-sensory teaching approach helped close gaps in reading and learning skills. Maintaining a high degree of daily structure and student accountability, academic success was within reach, and this success was publicly recognized during award ceremonies. The growth in student self-esteem was palpable, and once achieved, a student was willing to work even harder for more and with renewed confidence. Where once their graduation was from high school was questionable, college acceptance was now possible. None of this would have been possible without an, under, an outstanding hand-selected group of board members, administrators, and faculty members. And Colonel brought to his position a leadership style and ability to build teams and a way to establish relationships with staff, students, and their parents. And these were critical elements of the success of the school at this critical time in its history. But never one to rest on his laurels, Colonel Kimbrell went on to garner a best sustained management of a nonprofit organization award from the Metropolitan Atlanta Community Foundation in 1986. And then in 1988, a new residence for boarding students, Sipple Hall, was dedicated. This three-story dorm provided 62 top-rate student rooms, faculty apartments, offices, a reception area, a recreation space, and I don't know if they really loved it, but there was always a study hall that they had to attend in that building. In 1990, a stadia turf track and field was completed over the old soccer field, affectionately referred to as the mud bowl by the students. But this also added greatly to the school's athletic program. In 1991, a groundbreaking ceremony took place for a new auditorium, Wolf Memorial Library, Rollins Conference Room, middle school classrooms, and faculty lounge. The new building, aptly named Kimbrell Hall, was completed in 1992. A portrait of Colonel Kimbrell still hangs in the foyer leading into the auditorium. In 1993, the Small Boarding School Association held their annual conference at Brandon Hall. This conference was an important way for the school to highlight our programs and facilities to educational consultants, other affiliates, and peer schools. Thanks to Colonel Cambrell's vision, everything about Brandon Hall became the best it could be. The past was often grim and marked more often by what the school lacked than, rather than what it had. By the time Colonel Kimbrell announced his plans to retire at the end of the 1993-94 school year, year, Brandon Hall's then and now, the potential of Brandon Hall School then and now remains unlimited. Well done, sir. Well done. Thank you, Daniel and Lori, for speaking. Of course, Pastor, 
I appreciate it. Wow. Thank you all for coming to the memorial service to celebrate the life of my father, Colonel Harrison W. Kimbrell. I see so many new friends and old people I've known for years. He truly loved this church and its members. In his later years, worshiping here brought him companionship, mental stimulation, and spiritual support. His passing was nine months to the day that my mother died. He lost his beloved wife, Joyce Kimbrell. Her passing left a void in his life that the church helped to fulfill. Our family is indebted to the church for the support, companionship he and my mother received here. Thank you. Family and friends that I've known for decades have driven all this way to come celebrate his life. I am in awe, as I have personally been poor in keeping up with the people who have meant so much to our family over the years. Thank you. I'll strive to keep this short. This is to my father. Thank you every, for everything you have done for me and for your service to the country. In my early years, I often thought and acted like a typical teenager. I'm sure I must have been challenging at times, probably most of the time. The beauty of the story is that in the last 10 years or so since his your move to Florida, you became my best friend. The bond that strengthened even more after the passing of your wife, my mother. Since that time, you came to our house almost every night for dinner. Carolyn and I would have it no other way. Somehow I know you were very aware that you were not only welcome, but wanted. A few days after the colonel passed, they called up a college friend of mine had similar life experiences to my own and told him that I felt like I lost my best friend. His comment floored me, perhaps a pivotal moment in my life. His comment was, wow, I wish I could say the same about my father. That's when the grief of the loss truly flooded in. So many of us will miss him terribly. Semper Fi, Colonel. Lastly, I'd like to thank my dear wife, Carolyn, you not only accepted and treated my parents as your own, you were also always there for them. Carolyn never missed putting on a big meal for the family, um, and each night Dad would be there. Dad would often complain that he was gaining too much weight coming to our house for dinner every night. You were like a daughter to my dad. The last week of my dad's life, he was still mentally sharp, and his personality was unchanged. I was going to the hospital every night, and was so appreci he was so appreciative that Carol and I would not miss a day. During this time, we had some of the best socks we ever had. That will give me many great memories. One of his last requests to me was to help him make a few monetary contributions through his estate. Carolyn was in his thoughts. It was pointed out to me by one of his advisors how much he thought of Carolyn. To some extent, she did so much for him that she was somewhat of a caretaker when he needed help. He thought of her as a loved daughter-in-law and a member of the family. Thank you, Carolyn, for always being there for them. To those who knew my dad, it won't surprise them to know that until the end, he was thinking of others. Dad, I miss you so much. Thanks for being my dear friend as well as a great father. Thank you. I'm on. He was sharp to the end. Faith endured to the end. The family would like to welcome you um, to the fellowship hall for a light lunch. Um, the family will. Oh, <laughs> no light lunch. Oh, I forgot who I was. <laughs> a heavy lunch. <laughs> Yeah, we thank God for his life. 
And we thank God what he had, has done, what he had did, what he did in Harrison, Kimbrough, most definitely.